start talking about 11.3. More derivative formulas. Okay, so, so far, as we sit here, the only thing we can really take the derivative is, are things like this. Um, if I had something like x to the seventh power, could you take the derivative of that? Yes, right? So x to a power, I could do that. What if I had uh, like 5 in front of x squared? Could I do that? Yeah? Okay. What if I had like 3x squared minus the square root of x? Could I do that? Square root of x, could you write the square root of x as x to a power? Yes, yes. so you could, you, and then there's two terms, right? So you could do them individually. So I can do these. All of these I can take derivatives of, right? Um, and I could keep going, like if I just had a constant, like 10, I could take derivative of that, that's zero, right? So I can handle everything like that. Here's what I can't do yet. What if I have something like a function where I've got like x squared plus x plus 1, like that right there, could I do just that in here? Yes? Yes? Okay, I could. But if I put a squared out here, then that's going to change things. All right? That's going to change things. So right now, I don't really have a way of dealing with that. If I had something like 4x to the third plus x times another crazy thing over here, x squared minus 7x plus 1. If I had those two things being multiplied together, I don't have a way of doing this. Now, you could do that by itself, couldn't you? And you could do that by itself. But unfortunately, when it comes to derivatives, if you have a product, you cannot just do these separately. If you have addition and subtraction, you can do them separately, but not when you have products. And I also can't do this. I can't do quotients like this. And you can't even split this up into two fractions the way we did the previous problem, because you don't have a single x on the bottom. You have two terms. Right? So remember the previous problem with the average cost function? We were able to split it into three pieces. Can't do that here. So these are all like open questions. So we need more powerful formulas to be able to handle more complicated looking functions. And so what we're going to um, just introduce you to right now is what's called the product rule and the, and the quotient rule. And I think I'll just do the product rule right now. So product rule. And this is really an important rule. So let me see if the notation that I use here makes sense to you. Let's, you you're going to tell me whether or not you like this. If I have some function f multiplied by some function g, and I put that in parentheses with a prime mark on it like that, do you all understand with that notation what I mean is you've got two things multiplied and you want to know what their derivative is? Does that make sense? Okay. Do not write this down. Do not write this down. Wouldn't it be nice if this was the formula? Because this formula would mean, okay, if two things are multiplied and you want to take the derivative, all you do is take the derivative of this one and the derivative of this one and multiply those two answers together. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be nice if that's what it was? But it's not. Unfortunately, it is not. It's much more complicated than that. Here's what it is. It's actually the derivative of this one times this one, but without taking the derivative. Okay? Plus, now you do take the derivative of the g function and then multiply that times f. So look at it this way. It's like if you have a product and you want to take the derivative, they have to actually take turns getting the derivative. First, f gets the derivative, and g, nothing happens to it. Then you say plus, then it's g's turn to get the derivative, and f doesn't have anything happen to it. 
And I realize some of you who've seen this before, you may have seen this formula slightly different. They may have flipped those around or maybe moved these in front. This is the way I do it, so. All right, let's do an example. Let's say we have x squared plus 4x times x cubed minus 3x plus 1. Let's say I wanted to multiply these two together. Um, you know what? Let's, let's, call this, uh, let's call this f of x. Let's just call this some function f of x. So if that wasn't there, you could find the derivative of that, right? You could do that. And if that wasn't there, you could find the derivative of that. But the fact is that they are multiplied together. And you must see that multiplication. It's right there. I like to put a little dotted line between them to just kind of force you to see that you have a product, don't you? See the product there? I want you to visualize that this entire function right here is kind of like this f is in this formula. And then this entire function right here is kind of like the g is in this formula. Do you see it? You have f times g. So according to this formula, the derivative of our function should be the derivative of this times this plus the derivative of this times this. So I like formulas, but I like patterns also, or, or thinking of it in, in like, like words that you can kind of memorize. It's like you take derivative first times the second one plus derivative of the second one times the first one instead of like trying to remember a formula. But that takes time. This is the first time you've seen this for a lot of you, so it takes time to get there. Um, how about if I write this? x squared plus 4x derivative times g plus x cubed minus 3x plus 1 derivative times f. So let's see if that makes sense. I'm going to take the derivative of f, multiply times g, then I'm going to add to that the derivative of g, and then times f. So you see my little prime marks here? It's telling you that you still need to do some work. So what is the derivative of f? What is the derivative of this? 2x plus 4. And I'm going to put that in parentheses. And then I have this, right? So I just write that down. x cubed minus 3x plus 1. Then I say plus derivative of this one, 3x squared. 3x squared, that's the derivative of that. What's the derivative of this? Minus 3. And then what's the derivative of 1? Zero. 0. So that's it. That's the derivative of this part. And then I still need this. x squared plus 4x. OK. That is the derivative. That's it right there. Do you all follow that? Do you see how you actually have to know how to use power rule? in order to do this, like you can't take derivative, if you can't take derivative of that, then you're not going to be able to do the product rule. Now we, we could continue on um, trying to clean it up by distributing the 2x through the parentheses here, and then the 4 through the parentheses, and then the 3x squared over here, and then the negative 3 through here. But I think at this point I'm just going to call it a day. We're going to come back and do more uh, product and quotient rule. I haven't shown you the quotient rule. Uh, you know what? I will show it to you, though. Let me show it to you. I'm just going to put it up here. What if you have two functions being divided? Okay, so instead of these two functions being multiplied, they're being divided. The formula looks crazy ugly, but I don't want you to think of it as being crazy ugly. Let me write it down. Okay, that's the formula so far. I'm not done. Do you all recognize this formula? How? It's the same as this with one exception. What? 
instead of plus, it's minus. Do you all see that? Okay. So the quotient, to do a division, to take derivative of a, a quotient or, or a fraction, you're going to do this formula, but instead of a plus, a minus. And here's the big kicker. You have to divide the entire thing by the denominator squared. So whatever was down here, you got to square it. We'll do that later. But I wanted you to at least see that it's almost this formula just with a minus. Y'all have a good weekend. Remember our test is on the 20th. We still have some time. Do your homework for 10-7. Do as much as you can. <laughs>